Uh, we're with uh, Dr. James Dowd, the author of The Vitamin D Cure. Uh, in, your book, in your book, you talk about being vitamin D deficient. How do we know if we are or not? The, the best way uh, to find out if you're vitamin D deficient is to get a blood level done. Um, it's the most accurate. We can do risk profiles, um, uh, and there's one on the website for the book. Um, there's one in the book. Um, uh, and uh, the risk profiles can give us an idea of whether we're vitamin D deficient, but the most accurate way to know for sure what your level is and if you're deficient is to get a blood level. Mm -hmm. And the blood that you test that you want to get is called a 25-hydroxy vitamin D. There are actually two vitamin D tests. There's a 25-hydroxy D3 and there's a 125-dihydroxy D3. Okay. Okay? The 125 is the active hormone. Um, but it's not a good representation of how much substrate or building materials you have to make that active hormone that are stored in your body. The 25-hydroxy-D is a much better measure of total body stores, okay? And so that's the one that you want to measure to know whether you need to tank up, whether your tank is high, tank is low, um, or where, where, where you stand. Um, you can get these tests done um, through your doctor's office, and it should be paid for by your insurance. I've been doing this for um, six years plus mm -hmm. now, um, and, and I've never had the test not paid for. Um, uh, they just have to code it correctly, and uh, I code it as vitamin D deficiency. If 70% of the country is deficient, then, the, then just put that down as the diagnosis mm -hmm. and, and prove it true or, or untrue with the test. Um, there are actually mail order tests um, uh, that you can get, um, uh, which use a blood spot, a blood spot, just a finger stick mm -hmm. uh, to measure it, and those are, are fairly accurate as well. But those are going to cost you uh, money to to do. Um, but f some patients don't want to go to their physician, or their physician may say, oh, "I'm not measuring it because it doesn't need to be measured." Mm -hmm. Everybody gets enough vitamin D, e. and I used to hear this a lot, less so now than I did before. Um, uh, but um, so the test is the most accurate way okay. to find out what your stores are. And, and that being said, and as important as it is, it's not that common. Most of us have had blood tests a number of times, you know, from the doctor's office, but that's not included. Why isn't it more more common? Well, I think it's uh, um, anything that is somewhat new, new or old. I mean, vitamin D isn't a new mm -hmm. um, uh, molecule, um, but how we think about it in the context we think of it is new. We now associate vitamin D deficiency with an increased risk for cancer, and we associate it with an increased risk for cardiovascular disease and high blood pressure um, uh, and depression. And so it, the context in which we see vitamin D has completely changed in the last five to 10 years than, than prior to that time frame. okay? Uh, and, and when that context changes, behavior starts to change. But those changes occur very slowly, okay? So it takes a long time for it to trickle from research to uh, a new idea to putting it all into practice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and there are, there are practitioners out there who are at that leading edge and they've been measuring vitamin D levels now for several years. And then there are other practitioners who are still at the trailing edge um, uh, and they're just not so sure that, uh, that this is a cost effective way to do medicine and that we should be measuring this test. Um, but the studies show that vitamin D is linked to all cause mortality, vitamin D levels. And when your vitamin D level falls below 30, 32, which is what we think the break point at the low end is, mm -hmm. your risk of dying from anything and everything starts to rise. And it continues to rise the lower you get. Okay? So you could, you could probably get a sim similar graph for cholesterol. And we don't seem to have any inhibitions about ordering lipid profiles mm -hmm. in patients to look at their cholesterol. Um, uh, and there, um, there, are some, there are lots of lifestyle changes that correct the cholesterol, and cholesterol is a steroid hormone. And guess what? There's another steroid hormone that correlates with all-cause mortality, and it's vitamin D. And there are lifestyle changes and targeted supplements you can take to correct that as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think of it as an opportunity to identify something that we can actually do something about with, with simple lifestyle changes and targeted supplementation that has a, a, a broad impact on, on a patient's overall health.